right. As you may have noticed in the HT Quick Strike video in action, that both my rigs had a Dodger hanging off it. And this is something I learned from my dad, I don't know, probably 30 years ago. Um, he didn't actually use a Dodger, but he punched out his own um, stainless and would polish it um, to give some shine. It was a little bit different shape, um, and I still, I still have one of those. But essentially what I've done to expand upon that, as you can see, that hole I drill right there. Hopefully you can see that. And I just drill it at the balance point. Now this Dodger I still use for kokanee. I can still use it for trout. But what it allows me to do is to hook a swivel here. I always use heavier main line than I do my leaders in hopes that if, you know, you catch a big fish, um, and it snaps your line, which, you know, happens, that it's gonna snap down here, not on your dodger, so you're not losing this rig and having the fish swim off with it, which is far from ideal. So, what I do is I, I put leader off of both of these swivels, this barrel swivel and this barrel snap. You can vary that from 12 to, you know, 24 inches, whatever you'd like. Um, Sometimes the longer leaders seem to be a little more effective. Um, it's like they, they get attracted to this, um, but the, having it a little further away, maybe a shy fish, it's a little more productive. Um, but also the longer these leaders are, the more likely are, they are to kind of get tangled up when you catch a fish. So generally I'd say I run 14 to 16 inches on these leaders. Um, and what I typically do is I'll run a very small treble hook on one and a worm hook on the other, and I'll dangle some kind of sinking bait, worm, you could use you know, chicken livers, um, corn, eggs, I mean, you name it, anything that sinks. And then I typically do a floating bait. You could do power bait, marshmallows, whatever, on this other side. So then when it's in the water column, you've got this attracting fish by sitting down there um, as a visual, and then hanging down from it, you've got some form of sinking bait, and then floating up, you have your power bait. So kind of two different options for them, a little bit of separation of bait. I have had days where I catch fish on only rigs that I set up this way. And that's going back, like I said, 30 years, and with the ones that my dad made. <clears throat> um, and I mean, we would, we'd have, you know, jigging spoons down there, tube jigs, hair jigs, plain worms, corn, power, you know, every, and the, whatever we had down there with a little bit of flash, that's what was catching the fish. So um, I find it to be, you know, very effective. I still often, I don't know if we just got a bite. I still often will run some rigs without. I just try lots of different things, um, but that's just a really good tip to, you know, catch extra fish. If you have these and you fish kokanee or you use these for trout, it's just a simple way to utilize them through the ice. And, and I find it to be very productive. I've seen guys that will use it um, vertically, especially guys actually going after kokanee through the ice. Um, but, you know, this allows you to run two rigs. And I think that vertical or that horizontal presentation is also possibly a little more appealing when you're just dead sticking it like this, either in, you know, the HT Quick Strike or a similar device or just on a rod holder. So that's a good tip. I feel like it helps me catch a lot more fish, uh, really increases my productivity on the ice and kind of a fun thing to do. So I hope that helps.